Welcome to Earth Tide Studios, I'm Zach Knight and in today's video we're going to be looking at getting your bass to sound sick in your mixes. Bass is the foundation of a mix so it's really important to get that nice tight low end and your bass sounding fat. We're going to break down how to do that in this session and we also have a free vocal production course that teaches you the basics of recording, editing and mixing your vocals. If you want that just click the link below but for now let's get into Cubase. So we're in Cubase and today I'm going to be looking at how I mix the bass for the track The Devil's Cry. Now this is a pretty cool funky bass part and I'm going to be running through the second verse here. Just having a look at the session itself, I've got the bass DI here and I've also got a bass amp signal here. Uh, they're both obviously the same part here. This is just a reamped version of the DI which was uh, during the production it was actually printed through a dark glass B7K pedal. Let's just have a quick listen to what this verse sounds like with the bass. As you can see, um, you know, we've got the DI, we've got the amp signal here. They're both running through to this processing bus here, which is then running through to a bass bus here. And then that's going through to my stereo bus. So let's break down the mixing of this now. And we're gonna start off by looking at the bass DI. This is what it sounds like raw. Pretty cool. Uh, it was actually recorded with a jazz bass and it sounds lovely. And processing wise, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm running FabFilter Pro Q2 and I'm rolling off the low end here with a low cut at 24 dB an octave at 60 hertz and rolling off the high end here, 24 dB an octave at 250 hertz. This is something that you're probably not going to be able to hear unless you are wearing headphones or listening through to the monitors. But all this is doing is providing the low sub end of the bass. It's really just a quick way to be able to make sure that you're controlling that low end of the bass and processing all of that together. The next thing that I'm putting on the DI is I'm actually running Waves L1 limiter and I'm really controlling this bass and really limiting it quite hard here to make sure that that low end is being held under control. very important that you control the low end of your bass and you'll see I do that quite a number of times through my chain for processing bass on this song. Following along from the DI we're running the bass amp signal here and I'm just going to show you what it sounds like with no processing on it. Sounds awesome. However, we obviously need to make a few adjustments here with it. So the first thing that I'm running is I'm actually running the amp simulator from Cubase here from Steinberg. This just is a stock plugin and I've got it running here on this clean preset here and cabinet nine and I've tweaked it a little bit. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. It's just helping to control that amp signal there, give it a little bit of a cleanup and make it sound a little bit nicer. Following along from that, I'm running FabFilter Pro Q2 and I'm actually rolling off the low end here at 24 dB an octave at 325 hertz. And I'm also rolling off the high end here at uh, 7K, 24 dB an octave as well. And I've also got a little bit of notch EQ going on here getting rid of nearly 4 dB at 550 hertz, just to be above 3 dB here at 11K, and also getting rid of about 3.74 dB here at 1650 hertz. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to bypass the low and high cut uh, filters here, and then listen to that when they come in, and then we'll listen to what the notches are doing. quite dramatic and we'll just have a listen to the notches now. It's 
just really helping to control all of the nasty frequencies there. Following along from Falcilter Pro Q2, I'm running Soothe here on the bass distortion and I'm just using it to get rid of just a little bit of the annoying resonant frequencies. You'll also note that I have the amp signal turned down at minus five and the DI is at minus one. So let's have a listen to what they sound like together now with those processing on them. So as you can see, the DI is controlling the low end there and the amp has all of that high end there. Moving along to the bass processing bus and I'm running Soothe again here and I'm just getting a little bit more of that low end and controlling that high end a little bit too. Let's have a listen. The main thing that you'll note is that I've got the sharpness and the selectivity really high because I really want to just grab the really, really annoying resonances here, but not focus too much on having to push it too hard. As you can see, it's not dealing with anything below 150 and dealing with anything there above 7K as well. Next up after Soothe, I'm running FabFilter Pro Q2 and I'm just uh, controlling the low end here, doing another low cut here, this time at 40 hertz, 24 dB an octave, and another high cut here, a softer one here at 12 dB an octave, rolling off at 8,500. And there's also a couple of notches here, got this really fine notch here at 81 hertz of 1 dB, another one here at 114 hertz of 1 dB, 137 hertz, 2 dB, 169, 1 dB, and 227 dB, or 227 hertz of 2 dB. So we're just going to get rid of these two, these lot ones for now. We'll just bypass and turn on this low and high cut and have a listen. Now let's just listen to these notches one at a time and I'll just turn them on and off one at a time. turn them all on and off together. Just helping to control a few of those uh, resonant parts there in the low end, especially when we start to really compress this bass, we don't want those sort of getting out of control. It's really important that you are controlling your low end with your bass. So next up, I'm running FabFilter Pro MB, and we're actually ducking between the area of 96 to 406 hertz by 3 dB dynamically every time the kick hits. And we're also ducking out here just a little, uh, a little bit here around 54 hertz too. That's really just to help control the low end for the whole mix because you do really want to make sure that you're controlling your low end. I know I'm repeating myself saying the same thing, but it's just such an important thing to do when you are mixing bass in a heavy track. After the EQ, we've got some compression going on here. We're running with the CLA 76 on the black setting here and I've got this on the base preset here four to one ratio it attacks at three release is not quite at seven here and we're just doing a little bit of compression to control the low end
just tightening up that base there with some good quality compression there from the CLA 76. Next up, we're running some saturation here and I am starting off by using Decapitator from Sound Toys. I've got it on the end preset here and I've got it running three drive and it's 100% wet. Let's have a listen. just really giving it a nice bit of saturation, a little bit of distortion as well, um, and just making it sound just a little bit more nice with the mix. Following along from Decapitator, I am running the virtual tube collection here from Slate, and I'm using the New York one. I've got the saturation here running just about at four. Output is turned down by minus one dB, and it's 100% mix. And I've got it on the preamp session section here, rather than the console setting. Let's have a listen. A nice bit of saturation there. Next up, I'm making the bass sound good in small speakers, and I'm using R bass here. Uh, this is basically what it's going to do is it's going to create harmonic resonances of this fundamental that I've chosen, which is 70 hertz here, to be able to allow the bass to be able to be heard in smaller speakers. Speakers. You basically don't want to be putting the intensity any higher than about 21 on this when you're running it on bass. Let's see what it's doing. really just a fantastic way to make sure the bass is going to sound good in small speakers. So now that we're done with the bass processing bus, we're going to have a look at the main bass bus and we're going to be starting off here with some dynamic EQ. I'm going to use Waves C4 and what I've got here is I've got this cutoff sitting here at 100 hertz and it's basically just controlling the low end here for everything below 100 hertz here. It's going to dynamically push that low end down as the bass plays. Let's have a listen. This is a power tool for you to be able to control the bass low end in your mixes. I cannot recommend enough using dynamic EQ for you on your bass mixing. As much as it's fantastic for heavy mixing, it's fantastic for pretty much any kind of processing of bass. And I heavily recommend that you invest the time in using dynamic EQ on your bass mixing. And last up in the chain on the bass mixing, we are running some limiting. And once again, we're using the Waze L1 limiter here. And I'm basically just going to be attenuating to control that low end and the bass just a little bit more. This isn't working as hard as it was on the DI, but it's just controlling any of those peaks that are left over. Now let's have a listen to it in context with the rest of the song. Sounds fantastic and tight. So there you go, a pretty straightforward approach to being able to get your bass sounding nice, fat, tight and in control in your mixes. I know I went over it quite a few times, but getting a tight low end really gives you a lot of power in your mixes, and I'd really love to hear how you've been approaching doing that in your productions lately. Throw a comment below and let me know. Don't forget about our free vocal production course, and hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with these weekly tutorials. But for now, take care of yourself, have a good time, and take it easy. Bye.